a very good day my dear undergraduate and postgraduate students from now on for a short period i shall be handling a few abstract topics easier said than done and difficult to explain the topic for the day is radiation injury you find that it is an energy that travels in the form of waves or high speed particles and itself is divided into ionizing radiation and non ionizing radiation the examples for the non ionizing are ultraviolet light infrared microwaves whereas ionizing has got energy to remove tightly bound electrons it is more powerful such as x rays and gamma rays i hope you are able to identify the personnel on the screen a winner of two nobel prizes and was exposed to radiation by her and she is none other than mary curie there is an electromagnetic spectrum on the screen i find that the sources of radiation are numerous and you can very easily identify the gadgets on the screen accordingly you find that there is a varied frequency of the electromagnetic waves and these have also been measured at different levels they are able to penetrate the earth's atmosphere and reaches as a result of which you find that there is a lot of impact on the human as well as the other living creatures a short history regarding the history of radiation injury it is stunning to see that the radiation damage has tripled in the past 50 years and might be due to warfare research diagnostics occupational and even civilian the last word civilian i included after i went through the various tests there are some units by which you can measure the radiation curie for example gray and sievert these are some of it which are being used. and there is also an actual measure as well as a measure by means of the biological impact it creates as to the number of cells it can destroy so this is a basis of the cause as well as the units the picture that i am seeing on the screen is a radioactive contamination it occurred in brazil and there was an unsecured radiotherapy source which was taken and then thrown as a result of which there was an accident and a few people were affected by it 1987 brazil there are a list of civilian hazards on the screen in fact there are numerous thanks to wikipedia and he has denoted them every half century clarence madison he was a glass blower and the over exposure was the cause and incidentally he was an assistant to thomas alva edison the man of thousand inventions mary curie already i have mentioned it was an over exposure as a result of which she developed aplastic anemia and succumbed radium girls i shall be showing you the picture of it subsequently mining industry also we know that radium and uranium are found in the earth's crust and your robins very beautifully explains them both in chemical carcinogenesis as well as radiation itself cameras earlier and there was one us atomic commission wherein there were radiation burns because of an accident a mexico boy and all his family members were also affected
And here it is a query that is mentioned as a unit, which was obtained from a lost source, which this boy is pocketed and took it home. Proton beam. It occurs in the Institute of High Energy Physics in Russia and Vygotsky, wherein there was an accident again. That was a list of civilian hazards. Here, what are we seeing on the screen? Beautiful, in fact, the costliest of watches, the radium dial watches. And those years, it used to be, you find that these ladies are meticulously painting the dial of the watch and as they tend to paint, any painting brush will have a tendency to fan out the bristles. So in order to make them sharper, they actually wetted them with saliva. And later on, they paid the penalty in the form of multiple malignancies, including an osteogenic sarcoma. Right from manufacturing up to medical, we are being exposed to radiation. So you find that this is not only a source as such, but then there was a misconfiguration. And as a result of which, because of some loss of control, there were about eight times the higher amount of radiation than it intended to be. And there was a lot of medical legal case, etc. The hospital and the company were sued. What are the factors affecting radiation? One is age. Younger age, strangely, because the cells that are highly multiplying are more prone for radiation injury. The radiation technique, such as IMRT, intensity modulated radiotherapy, because the normal tissue can be exposed to a lower radiation and then there can be an injury also. Cone beam and then radiotherapy, the type of it, the photon and the beam leading to proton beam. This is incidentally a picture of the primary and the secondary spill. Initially what we showed was a primary one. Here I find that there are various substances which are being bound to each other, but finally they get separated. It is somewhat analogous to the primary and the secondary carcinogenesis or the direct and the indirect carcinogenesis. And it is said that the secondary spillover can be more dangerous, it can be far reaching than the direct. Again, the factors affecting, obviously the volume, the rate of delivery. Radiotherapy, you find that the normal cell, it recovers faster. And also, cumulative is reduced by the intervals. That is why during radiotherapy, they give a break and then continue with it. Cell proliferation, the DNA. Proliferating cells are more affected. And P53 is the guardian in this case. Hypoxia and ROS produces autolysis. Vascular damage. Vascular damage can be leading to impaired healing as well as fibrosis. And what am I seeing on the screen over here? It is again a radioactivity danger symbol that has been issued by this particular one. Thanks to Wikipedia for this reference. Now, you find that there can be the direct effects as well as the indirect effects. So there is an LET radiation and then the radio cell membrane gets affected by means of the direct effects. Also by means of this, there can be the superoxide that can be produced, hydroxyl radical, etc., which can lead to a cell damage. Ultimately what happens is the target is going to be the DNA. There is a single strand that is getting broken into and, and there can be also a lipid peroxidation and there can be an organelle damage such as leakage from the mitochondria leading to a transcription in this case, dysfunction as well as apoptosis or cell death. And these can be 
ultimately leading to an organ death also. Can you guess what we are seeing on the screen? This picture incidentally is from a very old New York Times. Obviously, the ladies wanted to look more and more beautiful. That is why they treated a persistent thymus. Probably they wanted to look beautiful earlier. And they went in for radiation, paid the penalty in the form of a papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. The DNA, as I said, is most targeted. It is not precisely repaired. It can be subject to mutations. The damage can be single base or double base, and you get a break in both the strands as such. And the cross links between the DNA and the protein is usually there. Normally what happens, as you see in chemical carcinogenesis, there can be a DNA repair. Otherwise, there can be mutation, multiplications, and it is beyond a period of repair. It can go in for carcinogenesis. And fibrosis is another thing that we feel in both the vasculature as well as the lung. I would like you people to have this carcinogenesis as a cross-reference for for the spelling mistake. Now, this is another source. It can be radiation injury to the various cells as yet mentioned over here, starting from the WBZ up to the stem cells as well as the various organs. Or it can be the cells, the internal structures or the various signaling pathways. Both of this can lead to an increased mortality. And the potential therapy that can block all this will be including all this cell block as such or an antioxidant, hypoxia, and the various forms of chemotherapy or the colony stimulating factors, etc. Paradoxically, sometimes the treatment itself can induce a second malignancy. Go back to your Robins and see. The morphological changes, chromosomes, there can be deletions, breaks, translocation, fragmentation, swelling and the clumping of the chromatin, pleomorphism, giant cells can be there. There can be the organelle degeneration. Between the blood vessels, there can be damage to the endothelium, fibrosis of the interstitium, as well as thrombosis. When we go to the radiation changes, what are the various tissues and organs which can be affected? On one side, I have got the lesion as such and then the tissue that is getting affected. Rapidly proliferating. There is a gastrointestinal mucosa, skin and the bone marrow. Acute irradiation. It can lead to the immediate effects such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and hematopoietic suppression. Respiratory Distress or acute radiation injury also can be there. Itching, ulceration of the skin. Hematopoietic, there can be a suppression of all the elements, hair, plastic, and even. Parenchyma, atrophy, fibrosis, and carcinoma. Malignancy, particularly in these cases, atomic bomb blast, fluoroscopic chest examination, radium dial paintings. These are the malignancies that have been mentioned in literature. Abnormal embryogenesis can be led to and brain. That is why the fetus is more prone for it. Skin and chronic lesion. That can be erythema, dermal necrosis and telangiectasia. Radiation induced malignancies. This is another one. It occurs after a long term effect. That can be a primary malignancy as well as a secondary malignancy in the sense. Second malignancy, not a secondary. Radiation-induced second malignancy. This occurs because of a change in the chromosome. And loss of chromosome 5 or 7 can lead to a myelodysplasia due to the mutation of the TP53 gene. Also, there is an alteration in the DNA repair. There is a chance of a second malignancy. There can be a break in the DNA single or the double strand. There can be the other changes also. It is a more simplified table, easy for us to remember. Testis sterility, bone marrow suppression, skin erythema, ovary sterility, lens cataract, GAT 
mucosal injury, lymph nodes atrophy fibrosis, lungs ARDS, and brain. It is usually resistant, but in embryonic, as I told you, the fetus or a child, there can be a chance of a destruction to the neuronal of the glyosis. This is a very beautiful picture that has been uploaded by this author over here. And he mentions it. It is a very student-like diagram, but it highlights all the points as such. Similarly, in the cell also, you find that there can be the activation of all this, and there can be a detachment of the endoplasmic reticulum, there can be the activation of the calcium, and the cell damage, various enzymes being produced, such as protease, endonuclease, etc. Coming to one of the organs as such, the lung. That can be the reactive oxygen species or that can be the NGS. The effects can be the DNA damage, break in the DNA strands and epithelial as well as blood cell death. Various mediators are again produced as secondary to inflammation. And also there can be chronic effects that can lead to a lung fibrosis. Hypoxia, etc. can lead to a pneumonitis. And sometimes you find that there can be a secondary toxicity because of which there is a low proliferation of the cells can be affected such as fibroblast, endothelium and the muscles. This is from the Ministry of Environment, Government of Japan. What happens over very beautifully it has been depicted. So there is a damage to the DNA, there is a failure of the repair as a result of which there is an incomplete repair or a mutation. Identical thing you people can apply to chemical carcinogens. So the repair is failed, there can be a cell degeneration or death. If this occurs, fine, there won't be a malignant transformation. But then if there is a repair succeeded, then it is fine. But incomplete repair, mutation and multiplication can lead to a malignancy. So this again is from the Ministry of Health, Government of Japan. He mentions what are all the physical effects and the heritable effects, what is the incubation period, the types of radiation and the tissue that can be affected, and what is the mechanism of this. I would like you people to kindly go through this particular table. And coming to the vascular endothelium, you find that there can be a variety of changes, such as vasodilatation, or there can be a growth, there can be fluidity, there may be edema. There is also a release of various substances such as antioxidants, anti-inflammatory agents, as well as anti-atherosclerotic agents, as a result of which there can be atherosclerosis. And there can also be a homeostasis, fibronolytic, as well as anticoagulant activity. So there is a dysfunction here. I am finding that there is a detachment of the endothelium. Immediately they expose subendothelial tissue leads to the von Willebrand's factor release, etc. You people know about it. And there's a reactive oxygen species that is leading to a damage. See what all happens. It can be apoptosis, fibrosis, edema, as well as femoris, senescence or old age, inflammation, coagulation, and vascular coagulation as such. And this is the reference for it. A simple but a beautiful thematic picture. There is no safe amount of radiation. Even small amounts do harm. Linus Pauling. Thank you.